Let's find out more from Mitchell Kotecha. So Mitchell, uh, your euro dollar target. Uh, that's right, Chloe. Our target remains at parity for year end. We've mm. been uh, bearish on the euro for some time. And uh, in fact, uh, we believe that we're on the way to the target. The risk is we could get there quicker than we even expect uh, at this rate. Uh, you know, I think the fact is that the ECB wants to get the euro lower. I think the QE that's being implemented, one of the aims of that is not just to keep bond yields suppressed, but actually it is to have a weaker currency to mm -hmm. help uh, fuel inflationary pressures back into the eurozone economy. Yield spreads also a key factor in the way euro dollar is trading, especially the two year between, uh, for instance, German government bonds and also two year US, tre US Treasury notes. Um, how do you think the, the yield spreads will move in light of the fact that in the case of the US QE, we actually saw bond yield spike up after QE was launched? Right. I think in Europe, uh, it, the ECB are going to find it very tough given where bond yields are at the mm. moment. They're going to have to be very aggressive in terms of their buying. They did say obviously they'll buy up to yields of uh, minus 0.2 percent where the deposit rate is. But um, I think I don't see we don't see any big spike up in yields. I think if anything, yields are going to continue to remain suppressed. Uh, with the inflationary impulse is not there yet. And I think there's no economic rationale for yields to spike. And given that the ECB is expected to be very aggressive in terms of pushing yields lower, buying European government debt, you know, we, we anticipate out of the 60 billion, around 45 billion euro will be just EGB, European government debt. So mm. clearly there's a lot to buy. And so I don't see big spike up in bond yields uh, as a result of this. In terms of bond yield differentials, absolutely, this is a key driver for euro dollar at present. And I think that's going to continue to drive the euro lower, especially given that US yields are moving higher relative to, to German yields at present. So around summertime, June, July, does this become a critical juncture, though, because you might have rates normalization <laughs> happening in the U.S. and we've got to revisit that issue over Greece? Well, that, that's true. I think in the next few months, we're, we're going to get to that point. You know, we're looking for the Fed to start hiking rates in June. Potentially, they will remove the word patience as early as this month. And I think markets are going to react more and more. While we do have Greece, again, Greece hasn't gone away by any means. And you know, I think this whole issue is going to come back to a head in the next few months. Uh, Greece has a long way to go to, to get to this level where they satisfy the euro group. So I think, again, that could be another big negative factor for the euro. So you know, there's a lot here that suggests further upside for the dollar, further downside for euro. In terms of the yield spreads, mm -hmm. also the Aussie dollar uh, versus the USD, that's been driven by the yield play as well. So where do you see the AUD go going in light of the fact that the RBA actually didn't move as what some had expected? That's right. It was a close call. Uh, we'd uh, anticipated the, move, the next move being in May, and we still believe that will be the case. But again, yes, I mean, this is driving Aussie dollar lower. Um, we're seeing, again, the yield spread with the U.S., again, widening in favor of the U.S. dollar. So we do see more downside. Now, we're not massively bearish because the Aussie dollar has come off a long way already. Mm. Uh, our forecast at the end of the year is 75 uh, Aussie dollar, 75. U.S. dollar rates. Is there any reason to believe that Mark Carney pulled out a rabbit out of the hat? Well, I think for Sterling, there's a number of dynamics here. Mm. Firstly, we do have the uncertainty around the UK elections mm. that I think will weigh on Sterling in our views. But at the same time, you know, I don't see uh, the UK being very quick in terms of hiking rates. Um, if anything, yes, the UK were one of the most aggressive early on in terms of QE. Uh, but at this stage, it seems unlikely they're going to hike rates anytime soon. You know, we've pushed our rate expectations back somewhat. So for Sterling, any gains in our view are going to be fairly limited. And if, if anything, there's still more downside pressure on oh, okay. sterling versus a dollar. Okay, we'll leave it there. Uh, Mitchell, very nice to talk to you today. Mitchell Kotecha of Barclays there.